Thank you so much for joining us for this special edition of WVA News at 6. I'm Lynn Brooks. And I'm Philip Coleman, and it's homecoming weekend at the University of Alabama. Yeah, you'll notice a little windy out here. <laughs> uh, also, very exciting here at the Capstone. A live look here from our WVA tower camera. This is the quad. The stage for the homecoming celebration is put together and ready to go. And the lighting of the homecoming bonfire in the middle of the quad will begin in just a couple of hours. And you may be surprised to learn that preparation and planning for the bonfire is not as simple as you might think. WVUA's Jennifer Edwards has that story. It's the University of Alabama's ROTC students who are the ones that make the homecoming bonfire happen each year. It's a lot of fun to be out here and to put on something that so many people come to. But Griswold says building the 20-foot structure for the fire isn't as easy as it may look. It takes about 400 wood pallets, two hours, and a lot of hands. And it's the cadets who have to guard the structure 24-7, which even means camping overnight. I won't do overnight again. <laughs> it was too cold for me. It's not quite as bad as it looks. Uh, we have TV. We have a TV out here. Uh, they have the Xbox out here, so it's not too bad. Cadets say despite the long hours guarding the structure for the fire, it's actually a good time to sit down and get to know their fellow cadets. Normally, we're standing at attention and getting yelled at all the time, but. It's kind of a time to get to know the people in RTC better. You get to relax and talk. The best part would be getting to hang out with my cadets, my younger cadets that I'm usually yelling at. So it's nice to just sit back and relax with them and be casual and show them that I'm, I'm actually a nice person. And just as the bonfire is a timeless tradition at the Capstone, the ROTC students are starting their own tradition. Along with guarding the bonfire, we have to guard these coins too. And so like when I leave, I'll pass it on to the next person that comes along and they have to safeguard this and the secret note. So far, the cadets say there hasn't been any problems while guarding the structure. Reporting in Tuscaloosa, Jennifer Edwards, WVUA News. And the lighting of the bonfire will happen just after the pep rally. So what kind of weather can we expect if you're heading out tonight for one of those high school football games or heading out tomorrow for Bama's big game? Cold air is moving in, but just how cold will it get? A lot of changes coming. Chief Meteorologist Richard Scott joined us now live with a first look at our forecast. Hi, Richard. Hey, Lynn and Philip. It's a good Friday evening, too. Cold front arriving now. You probably noticed that wind picking up here at the city of Tuscaloosa. We've got 75 now. 70 reform, 55 in Columbus, a cold air. Hey, it is nosing in, and once that cold air takes over tonight, it's going to stay cold for a while. So here's the cold front now. Again, moving into Tuscaloosa, Birmingham areas. Behind the front, a lot of cloud cover, a little bit of drizzle back there, but I really think that dries up later on tonight. So here's that forecast, 70 by 7. As that front does arrive, we quickly fall 10 o'clock around 58 on average and 54 at midnight tonight. And the winds will pick up tonight. So if you're heading out to the bonfire, may need that jacket later on tonight. So it gets cold in a hurry, but how cold is it going to get? And what about the latest on Hurricane Sandy and the disaster across the northeast? Your forecast is coming up. All right, thank you, Richard. And Bama's homecoming theme this year is timeless tradition. And your home team has a homecoming tradition of our own. We bring you live coverage of the homecoming parade. And joining WVUA's Lynn Brooks again this year as our celebrity co-host is the first lady of Alabama football, Mrs. Terry Saban. Our special live coverage of the parade kicks off at 2 p.m. Saturday. Last year, Mrs. Saban told us that the growth of the university has made the festivities even more fun. Our enrollment keeps going up. Right. We have a great student body. I think people are a little excited about football. That helps too. Um, but I, I also think that after the tornado, um, people need a coming together. And, and what better way to come together than homecoming? And after the parade, be sure to catch all the highlights on WVUA News at 10. And WVUA is the place to start your football Saturdays. Don't miss Crimson Tide kickoff tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Gary Harris will have complete game day coverage with Alabama Governor Robert Bentley as the guest picker. It doesn't get any bigger than this. A breakdown of the matchup also on that show for you. Tons of feature stories on the Crimson Tide. Join us tomorrow morning right here on WVUA TV. And today all the tarps were removed on Magnolia Drive and Colonial Drive to reveal those 
outlandish <laughs> lawn decorations. One of my favorite parts of homecoming, actually. Student groups have been rolling tissue paper into pops. That's what they're called for hours this week. Today, their hard work is on display for everyone to see. It's estimated every organization used more than 50 cases of tissue paper. That is about 360,000 individual pieces of tissue. They roll those into little tiny balls and they call those pops, P-O-M-P-S, pops. Uh, what started out as plywood and chicken wire at the beginning of this week is now each organization's idea of a timeless tradition. I like how it's creative and they all make it with tissue paper. We're, we are so excited to have another chance to see this another year. They just get better and better. How do they do it? How do they keep designing and creating these wonderful works of art for all of the fans to see? It's a great day to be on this campus. And I completely agree with that. It is something to see, folks. And first, second, and third place winners will be announced at the big pep rally and bonfire tonight right here on the University of Alabama campus. Just gorgeous. Absolutely. And Saturday is packed with fun activities for the entire family. At the Capstone, kickoff on the quad will be at 4.30 p.m. on the east side of the quad. And while you're there on that side of the quad, also at 4.30, the Alabama gymnastics team will be signing autographs. And the gates to the stadium will open at 5.30 with the Walk of Champions happening soon after that at 5.35. Now kickoff of Alabama versus Mississippi State will be at 7.30. And every time Alabama has a home game, that means WVA brings you Alabama Game Day Advantage. It's coming your way tonight, not very long from now. Join Danny Salter tonight at 6.30. He'll be talking all about the exciting things happening on the UA campus this weekend, including all the information you need to know about tomorrow's parade. Also, some fun things you can do on the quad. That's happening tonight live at the Bryant Museum. Also, I'll be on hand for tonight's show. Get the advantage, the Alabama Game Day Advantage, 6.30, right here on WVUA-TV. And before you cheer on the Tide on Saturday, you can also get your football fix Friday night. Football Friday is right after WVUA News at 10. Gary Harris and the WVUA sports team will bring you all the highlights from West Alabama's biggest high school games. That's starting tonight at 1035.